الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور صدق الله العظيم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم when he taught the ummah this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over a period of 23 years Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went into a lot of details regarding this deen and things that are of importance in this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Then finally Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started summarizing things for the ummah so at least we would have some idea of the gist of the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course the main purpose of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's existence and for Allah to send Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam was to teach people the deen. And everything that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught throughout his life was part of his deen that he was sent with by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one of the ahadiths telling us the summary of the things that a person must have in this deen and things that would help improving our iman, things that would help protecting our iman, things that would preserve our iman, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam briefly mentioned those things also. He says in a hadith, Al-Imanu bid'un wa sab'un shu'ba. Iman has more than 70 branches. فَأَفْضَلُهَا قَوْلُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ The highest of these branches, the best of these branches is to say لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَدْنَاهَا إِمَاتَةُ الْإِمَاطَةُ الْأَذَى عَنِ الطَّرِيقِ And the lowest is to remove the harmful object from people's way. More than 70 branches of deen of Iman. What do these branches mean? These branches include things that are part of our faith. That every believer must believe in them in order for this person to consider to be considered a believer. So it includes the aqaid, the beliefs. It also includes the fara'id of deen. That every person must perform in order to have the attachment with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obtain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, if a person will not fulfill those fara'id in spite of being a believer, Allah will be angry with this person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be upset with the person. This person would not get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These things are called fara'id. The third thing is refraining from muharramat. They fall under the same category that if a person will not stay away from these things in spite of being a believer, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be angry with this person. This person will not be able to obtain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here we have three categories. Aqaid, beliefs, fara'id, things that we must do. Muharramat, things that we must stay away from. And the fourth category is of those deeds that would make our iman stronger. Those things that would be a sign of the acceptance of these first three categories. If the first three categories are being done properly and the right effect is being there, is being seen on the person, then the fourth category will come by itself. The fourth category will be seen in this person's life. Those are the type of aman, type of deeds that will improve this person's iman, that would protect the first three type of aman, that would increase his iman, that will get him more pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get him closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in akhirah. Four categories. And if we look at the hadith, we can very easily see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving the example of our iman with a tree. That there is a huge tree there. The tree is full of fruits. All kind of fruits are there on the tree. But of course, these fruits are hanging on the branches. They don't, the fruit doesn't come out on the main trunk of the tree. The fruit comes out on all of these branches of the tree. So it's must for the tree to have these branches in order for it to carry the leaves and carry the fruits. Without these branches, there is no fruit of this tree. Without these branches, there is no fruit of the iman. Just the main trunk is standing there. It's taking a space in the garden. When you would count the number of trees, you may count it as one of those trees. We have 100 trees. But imagine if out of 100 trees, 50 of them have no branches. They are only taking up space. And for any person that would come from outside and look at these branches, at this garden, rather than being happy and pleased of seeing 100 trees, he will be upset and he would dislike the garden, he would disapprove the garden, the value of the garden would go down, that you have 50 trees in your garden that have no branches to them. And these trees are useless, they are fruitless. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us. That we need to, with our iman, with the trunk of this iman, we must have the branches on this iman. So that fruit would come on it. Otherwise, we are taking up a space. When people come and look at the garden of this iman, and they see people who have no fruits on them, they see trees there that have no branches. So people just turn their face away from this iman that I have seen so many people in that masjid. I have seen so many people who are considered to be believers, but I see nothing good from these people. A lot of time people complain about us. And the complaint is very valid. And we should, sometimes we get very upset with that complaint that they don't look at themselves. They don't look at their own people. And they complain about us. In reality, we should not be upset by that complaint. In fact, this complaint should make us even happier. Why? Of course, on one hand, the complaint shows that we have some fault in us that we need to correct. And if we have Iman and we worry about our Iman and about our faith and about this deen, then we all will look towards correcting our souls. But the thing that would make us happy about this complaint is, we should realize complaint comes when there is expectation. If there is no expectation, then there is no complaint. People, alhamdulillah, up to this day, knowingly or unknowingly, they realize that if there is anything good, it has to be in this ummah. 
And when they see the Ummah is doing something different than that, then they start having complaint because the expectation from this Ummah was something different. When we tell them, don't you look at your own people, no expectation. So therefore there is no complaint, let the person do whatever he wants. If a person comes to your home, he never expected that you would offer him anything, not even a glass of water, and here you tell the person, you can't leave until you have a dinner with me. And you offer the person dinner, and you offer him a best type of dinner, how happy this person would be. But if this person came with the expectation that you would offer him a dinner, and you offered him a cup of tea, he would go back upset and he would keep on complaining. Then I went to him and he didn't even offer me a dinner. He came with high expectations. This is why he's having complain about you. If this person would not have expectation, then he would be happy with anything that you would offer. Glass of water, he would be more than happy. People have expectations from this Ummah of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> They know that the teachings of this Prophet of Allah are so great that his followers should be very fruitful and his followers should be very helpful people in this world. If there is any good that is expected, it should be in the followers of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is expected from us. And alhamdulillah, we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is how we are looked at. That people still know that there has to be something good from this ummah. So all of those complaints are well taken. And that shows that alhamdulillah the expectations are good from the ummah. But at the same time, it should make us think about our souls. And that is, am I that tree in the garden of this deen, in the garden of this ummah, that is just standing there taking the space and turning people away from it, from the garden, that I'm becoming the cause for people to turn away and dislike this garden of this deen, because I have no branches on me, because I have no fruit on me. It's extremely important that we look at our lives from this angle. And what work on our deen and our iman, because that is for sure that a person who would follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would be always liked by people. Even the enemies who always accuse him, in their heart they would know that this person is very helpful and very useful in this world. His existence is a blessing. And this is, this is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived his life. People knew that the existence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amongst them is a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announces this in Quran. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not only that you don't hurt people, that you don't plot against people, I, Allah, are announcing, I'm announcing this to the world. As long as you are amongst them, even I won't punish them regardless of what type of sins they commit. Just his existence over there was a protection for the whole ummah. Was protection even for non-Muslims. Basically the adab is for kuffar. Allah will not send adab even to the kuffar as long as you are amongst them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His existence was a blessing. And even people around him realize that we can never have a person with this type of characteristics, with this type of behavior, with this type of morality, with this type of beautiful way of life, so helpful, so useful, and in every field of life, he is teaching us, he is benefiting us, and 
nowhere that you see that this person is being harmful in any way to the world. And a person who would follow the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, then this would become his situation too. That this person would always be looked at the same way. Of course, we can never be on that level. But we need to realize that people always love good. Whatever is good there is being loved. People like it. Yes, there are some people who don't like good things. Their nature is corrupted. They don't like to see anything good. When they smell something bad, they get happy. Yes, there are people with that corrupted nature around. When they see people, people that are doing evil, it makes them happy. When they hear about people, people dying, people getting killed, they get happy. That's a corrupted nature. Normally the people that are around us, everywhere, their nature is good. And when they see good, they appreciate the good. And this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us. How to live in this world as believers, as good human beings. We see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's teachings. How to live as a good imam, as a good teacher, as a good soldier, as a good uh, husband, as a good father. And you take it in every field of life and you see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is setting beautiful examples there. And at the end of his life, he's telling us that I'm telling you of about 77 things. If you take care of these 77 things, you will be able to adopt majority of the things, or at least the main things that I have been teaching you people. Al-Iman bid'un wa sab'una shu'bah. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, that there are about Seven, over 70 branches, and the scholars have counted them, around 77 branches of Iman. And as I said earlier, these branches are divided and distributed in four different categories. If a person would have all of these four categories of the branches of Iman, this would be a beautiful tree in the garden of this deen of Allah. There are many scholars of Islam who wrote books about these branches of deen, branches of iman. And there are detailed book, books written about them. One of the very famous books written on this topic is by Imam Bayhaqi, rahimahullah, a well-known scholar of Islam, a well-known muhaddis. He wrote a book on this topic called Shu'ab al-Iman. He named it under the same name. That branches of Iman. Insha'Allah, in the light of that book, we would go over these 77 branches of Iman very briefly. Try to cover as many as we can in each session. So at least we all know these branches of Iman. Things that are related to our Aqidah, we can have a good understanding of them. Or at least realize this is part of our aqidah and part of our iman, something that I have to have. And the other things that are related, related to aman, inshallah we'll talk about them also so that we can correct our aman and understand what things are of importance, what things that we need to adopt in our life. How do we need to set our personality so that this tree that we, have, that we, we carry with us, which is the tree of iman, will have branches full of fruit on them, the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised the Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa and the way he taught us, and the, through the teachings that he left for us, how can we become the type of people that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam expected to see and have in this ummah. So inshallah, in the next sessions, we will go through these branches of iman according to these different categories. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to be the fruitful believers in this garden of Iman. And be the type of people that will bring more into people into the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah protect us from being the type of people that would drive people away from this Iman.
that will drive people away from the garden, this beautiful garden of Iman, and we become the cause for of, of those people being deprived from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to Surat al-Mustaqeem. Aqulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa risa'il al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat, wa akhiru da'wana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.